my score prediction for this game is going to be 42 Ohio State, 10 FAU. And this time it's Fields on the carry. Watch out! Justin Fields! Hello, Columbus! 51 yards! To the 25. Play fake. Fields to throw it with time over the middle. Wide open touchdown, Bucks. Jeremy Rucker. First down at the Florida Atlantic 32. Fields lets it fly high. Touchdown, Ohio State. Benjamin Victor. It's in the backfield to compliment as a runner. Watch out. On first down, play fake. Fields delivers over the middle. Oh, caught. Touchdown again. Alave. Ohio State 48. First and goal at the three. Play fake. Fields throws. Caught. Touchdown. Jeremy Rucker. Brooks kept out. The Seminoles going to be. First to goal of the one. Diving over the top. And a touchdown for the Buckeyes. Forty-five to twenty-one was the final score, as you could just see. My prediction was forty-two to ten. So all in all, for me being notoriously bad at predicting Ohio State games specifically, 45 to 21, 42 to 10 is relatively close. So I'm not too disappointed with my, uh, <laughs> my prediction. I'm in a Voxer chat, as I told you before, uh, with a few guys, mostly my family members. And my brother actually was the closest to the score. So my brother and I said we should bet alcohol, like some sort of drink or something like that. And my brother doesn't drink alcohol, so <laughs> all we have to get him is fucking, was it Diet Dr. Pepper or Dr. Pepper? <laughs> something like that. So that's not a big deal. Woohoo! It's like a win-win situation. Not too bad on the score prediction and don't really have to buy any liquor. <laughs> so I will say... Uh, the 21 points, you know, I thought that they would score less than that. Um, I give myself half an excuse, and the reason I say half is because I think our first string defense only allowed them six points, like two field goals. And when they got their first touchdown, our third string, second or third string, basically our third string defense was in. And I only give myself half an excuse for that because when I made my prediction of 10 points, I was thinking at some point the third or second string defense in the first, second and third offense is going to be in, you know, third, fourth quarter. So I had already had that in mind. So I thought 10 points would be with including the second and third string defense. But I give myself half an excuse for that, but I didn't expect them to score 21 points. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty happy with the first game. And now let's get into the positives and the negatives of what I saw in the first game. Okay, as far as the positives, I came up with two distinct positives that came out of Saturday's game. And I think number one was our offense. Like, after last year, we had such a great high-powered offense behind Dwayne Haskins, who was completely different than what we were used to. We were used to the run and kind of pass, kind of QB, more run style, option style, to having Dwayne Haskins, who was not really a runner much at all. He could do it, but he didn't do it much, and he just would throw the ball, and he was like, why well, he's the Washington Redskins' first pick, <laughs> because he was more of an NFL pro-style passer kind of person, and it just was very different for us and we scored tons of points so now with Justin Fields who's more of a JT style with better I would say skills than JT it was like everyone including me was pretty nervous about what's it gonna look like how is it gonna like feel and in the first six minutes of the game we had 28 points <laughs> I don't think we've ever scored that many points in six minutes Six minutes of the first quarter, it was 28 to zero. I was remember just being shocked by that. And so we came out full guns blazing. Justin was on mark, he was throwing well, and he was running. His first touchdown was a 51 yard touchdown. So that was definitely a huge plus. 
Number two huge plus is that the defense wasn't atrocious. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say that they're perfect or that they're awesome and that they're back to the silver bullets. I'm not quite sold on that yet, which we'll talk about in the negatives. But they were definitely, the biggest thing that you could see was they were flying to the ball. And that is huge. Last year, guys were out of place. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. Guys were running off 55 yards, 75 yard, 85 yard runs. In like three plays, they were scoring against our defense. It looked like Oklahoma. <laughs> but uh, our defense looked like they are better and they're on their way up. And now granted, this was FAU and they're not the most high powered offense that we're gonna see. Although they are supposedly better than next week's Cincinnati Bearcats who we play. Uh, but they are not, they're not going to be as good as like these top offenses that we're going to see. So we're a little worried. I think everybody in Ohio State's a little worried about the zone defense that is what we're playing instead of the man to man aggressive defense. Hopefully we changed it up to like a mixture and we were only playing zone mostly this game. So that's a little bit of a nerve fear kind of thing that we have. But that is the two things that I can come up with right away is that our offense looked really really good when they were high powered within the first six minutes of the game and then second our defense looked definitely improved from last year which is key if we're going to even make it you know at all to the playoff because last year our offense definitely was playoff worthy but our defense would have crushed us in the in the playoff if we would have made it so i'm actually one of the few people of course i want to make it to the playoff every year but last year i was glad that we did not get in because I think if we would have got in, we would have looked like Notre Dame or we would have looked like, like trash. We would have gotten crushed. Okay, and on to the negatives. So the main negative is obvious, I think, to everyone. And that is we came out and we just guns blazing 28 to 0 in the first six minutes, which was one of my positives. But the number one negative was that after that 28 to 0, first quarter, we didn't score again until I think the second half. It was like we just like went into like a coma and just like we didn't care. They adjusted their defense. We didn't adjust our offense. Now part of that might be the plan that we don't want. And if people kept saying, oh, we don't want to show all of our stuff. Well, that's true, but it was looking pretty horrible. It was reminiscent of the JT days. Like and once they figured out JT, and what he would do, they would just stop our offense, which is exactly why when we made it into the playoff against Clemson, Clemson absolutely crushed us. They crushed us 31 to zero and we didn't score a single point because JT at that point had been figured out. That's my biggest fear about Justin Fields is if he does not show that he's actually dual threat, because JT was dual threat, but he was much more of a runner and an option guy than he was a thrower. His arm was weak. Now, everyone's saying that Justin's arm is not weak. It's definitely better than JT's. Uh, but, you know, he threw a couple passes that were really accurate in this game, but there was they were wide open too. So when he starts getting pressure, that's, you know, that's going to be the big thing is, is, is he going to be accurate throwing? Because if he's not accurate throwing and he's not like, like JT, who wasn't a deep threat presence, they're going to figure out Justin Fields like that. And I don't care how athletic he is, he's going to get crushed against good teams, against good defenses. If he can't keep them, you know, being honest with his throwing, which is why in the end, Haskins, even though he wasn't a runner, I think the college games become more like the NFL in the sense that you got to have a dual threat at the minimum. And then if you have a person who can throw like Dwayne Haskins or something like that, you're at an advantage because it's going to, and you have good receivers, of course, then you're going to be amazing because they are just going to dominate. But if you got, if you have like a mostly running quarterback and they don't throw all that great, I think it's to your disadvantage because once they figure out that you can't throw the ball and you're not going to do it with like consistency, they're going to hone in on that run and I don't care how skilled you are, if they send everybody in the box at you as a runner, they're going to stop you. And so 
that's my biggest fear is that we kind of just like went into a lag and, and of course it's his first game so I'm not going to hold that. He's going to get better. But I just hope that it doesn't turn into a JT season where it's like we were really, really good against teams that aren't that good but against teams that have a great defense they figure out after like a quarter what Justin's like and what he's going to do and what our game plan is with him. More of the run, whatever and not so much of a threat with the pass like we've had with Dwayne. And they just like hone in and stop it and then our offense looks like it did for a quarter and a half against FAU who had a terrible defense this wasn't even a good defense this was a terrible defense and they adjusted and stopped us that's fear number one fear number two is everyone's like kind of scared about the defense but I'm actually not scared about the defense which is crazy because I usually harp on the defense more than anything else my brother my cousins and everybody can attest to that I am so bad with the defense, but the defense, first team defense was actually pretty good. And the thing I'm more nervous about, which every team is dealing with right now, is that we have a bunch of injuries. So when we were playing with our second string, we were actually playing with our third string because our second string was our first yesterday uh, because a lot of them, especially on offense, uh, because people were hurt. So. Uh, that's gonna make it, especially on defense, when we had some of the defensive line as third stringers, that's when they started scoring. It, it's it's kind of nerve wracking with the with the injuries, but that's not the that's not the thing I'm scared about because even with that, the first string defense only allowed like six points, fully allowed six points, and those were just field goals. And they were in there, they were getting sacks, they were stopping for negative yards in the first half. FAU had way negative yards. They didn't even have positive yards. So that's not what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about, number two, is I'm worried about penalties. Because one of the reasons that the offense was starting to like kind of go down is be mostly because of penalties. I watched it again, which I would say to every one of you who wants to like think about more in depth about what happened in the game. You need to like the next day after the game is shown, there is some YouTube channel, I think it's like RT Uploads or something like that. They do every game in college football and they take out all the commercials and just do snap to snap to snap. So it's in 40 minutes or 35 minutes. So you basically watch the game without any commercials and it's just snap, 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 snap. And I think that's a great way to watch the game because it doesn't, we're so easy to forget what happened on the play before. But when you watch it back to back and you see it like kind of transitioning very quickly, it gives you a different perspective on the game. And when I watched that again, I actually realized the offense wasn't doing that bad after they went into their little lull. They weren't doing that bad. They There was one that was like an 18-yard catch by Olave who got taken back because of a penalty because he did an, an interference offensively. Then there was like a second and one that ended up being a second and 11 because the stupid, uh, I think it was Josh Myers, got like an, uh, a false start. And then there was like several of these like penalties, which Meyer was known for in the past, was these penalties, penalties, penalties. I think that we were like 128th out of 132 teams last year of penalties. So last yesterday we had 69 yards of penalties against us that we just, if we would have cleaned that up, I think we would have even scored more points because we were like driving and then that, that's going to kill a drive when you go from third and one to third and 12 or third and 11 because you got a 10 yard holding penalty or second and one or an 18 yard catch gets called back because of some sort of stupid hold that was happening a lot when the offense was going so it was kind of like compounding problems so i would say number one negative is that our offense kind of went into a lull and kind of makes us look like maybe it's gonna be like a jt situation uh, and number two would be penalties which is what caused number one so these two things, I think we need to clean those up. That's the positive about it, is those things are, can be cleaned up as time goes on. As long as we don't keep making those penalty mistakes, I think the offense will keep rolling. And if the offense is rolling and the defense is doing their part, then I think we're good. I'm not sold on the defense's zone defense, but I'm not even gonna critique that yet because it didn't get exposed yesterday. When we f go against another good offense, if it gets exposed, then you're going to see me on here bitching. <laughs> that was my wannabe quick review that was not quick at all of the FAU 
Ohio State 2019 game. Uh, I was quite surprised because I looked for other fan reactions to this game, and I didn't find any. There's no way I'm the only fan that is doing a reaction and a preview of the games for 2019, other than the you know professional people. <laughs> So, uh, as always, I hope that you are watching this. I hope I can get people to give their comments and we can have other Buckeye fans kind of complaining and kind of talking about their positivity of what's going on this year. I would love to start that kind of community on my channel. So, in the future, uh, always like and subscribe and look for more content on Ohio State or music reactions and just basic counseling stuff. So thanks for your time. Go Bucks.